What's up guys, it is Mike from Mana Hoarders. In this video we are bringing you a commander deck tech for a teamer commander, Surak Dragonclaw. Before we dive into the video, there's going to be a few things we want to go over. First up, this is a fairly budget option, coming in at $45.73. This does include the commander and all of your lands. Another thing, this deck is going to hit around a 5 or 6 out of 10 on the power scale. Now granted, there are plenty of ways to upgrade the deck, which will take it out of this current price range. Also, this price is going to vary greatly depending on the quality of the cards you purchase, the vendor you use, and a variety of other factors. You can cast Surak Dragonclaw for two, one green, one blue, and one red. He is a 6-6 human warrior. He does have flash, meaning we'll be able to cast him at instant speed. Also, he can't be countered, creature spells you control can't be countered, and other creatures you control have trample. We went for a pretty straightforward build with this deck. We want to play very large creatures since Serac is going to give them trample. Also, we want to play enchantments that want us to play creatures with high converted mana costs and high power and toughness. Lastly, we want to play cards that help us evade our opponent's creatures, get them off the battlefield, or fly right over them, and play some very quick spells just to kind of protect our creatures, protect our commander in the event they want to use some sort of targeted removal. First up, let's take a look at our enchantments. Aether Charge. For 4 and a red, we get a red enchantment. Whenever a beast comes into play under your control, you may have it deal 4 damage to target opponent. That's right, we are going to be running a lot of beast tribal in this build. Alpha Status. Enchanted creature gets plus 2, plus 2 for each other creature in play that shares a creature type with it. Colossal Majesty. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control a creature with power 4 or greater, draw a card. We are going to be running a lot of big creatures, so this will not be a problem, and it will give us a nice card draw. Elemental Bond. Whenever a creature with power 3 or greater enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. Fires of Yavimaya. Creatures you control have haste. You can also sag and give target creature plus 2 plus 2 until end of turn, but we mostly care about granting haste to our creatures. Serac is going to make it so they can't be countered. He's going to give them trample, and the fact that they might have haste when they come onto the battlefield is too good to pass up. Levitation. Simple enchantment, but no less effective. Creatures you control have flying. If some way they're able to find a way through all of our trample, haste, can't be countered nonsense, we will fly right over them and smack them right in the face. Mighty Emergence. Whenever a creature with power 5 or greater comes into play under your control, you may put two plus one plus one counters on it. So not only are big creatures coming in, they're hitting the battlefield and getting even larger with this enchantment. Rhythm of the Wild, a personal favorite of mine. Creature spells you control can't be countered, so even if Surak isn't on the battlefield, we can make sure they're hitting the battlefield and doing what they need to do. Non-token creatures you control have Riot. They will either get haste or a plus one plus one counter. Sarkons and Ceiling. Whenever you cast a creature spell with power four, five, or six, Sarkons and Ceiling deals four damage to any target. Also, when you cast a creature with power seven or greater, Unsealing will deal 4 damage to each opponent and each creature and planeswalker they control. Very explosive in this build. And where Ancients Tread for 5. Whenever a creature with power 5 or greater comes into play under your control, you may have where Ancients Tread deal 5 damage to target creature or player. Based on our enchantments, you can probably tell we are running a lot of very large creatures and creatures with high converted mana costs. So let's go ahead and jump into our creatures. Arboreal Grazer. For one green, we get a 0-3 beast with reach. Whenever it enters the battlefield, you may put a land card from your hand on the battlefield tapped. So a 0-3 that can block flyers isn't bad, especially for one mana. And he's going to help us accelerate our mana just a tad bit, so nice for the investment. Caller of the Pack. For seven mana, you get an 8-6 Trampler. Whenever he attacks, create a token that is attacking each opponent that is not the defending player, and then exile that token at the end of combat. Caustic Caterpillar for one green, we get a 1-1 Insect. Obviously, it is not a beast, but the fact that we can put it on the battlefield and use it later on to destroy a target artifact or enchantment is quite beneficial. Chrome Shell Crab, a 3-3 Crab Beast. We can play it face down as a Morph, so a 2-2 for 3 of mana of any color. And then whenever it is turned face up, exchange control of target creature you control and target creature and opponent control. So, if an opponent has a considerably more powerful creature than someone else on the board, or is just an ability that we want to take away from them, we could use this ability to our advantage. Circle of Elders. For 4 mana, we get a 2-4 Human Shaman with Vigilance. The key to this card is the fact that if we have creatures whose total power is 8 or greater, 
We can tap him to add three colorless mana to our mana pool. This will help us cast even larger creatures easier early in the game. Copper Hoof Vorak. For five, we get a 2-2 beast. The key is this ability. It'll get plus one, plus one for each untapped permanent your opponent's control. So if you have a player who's playing blue and leaves mana open constantly for their counter spells, he is going to get pumped up as a result. Draconic Disciple. For one, a red and a green, you get a 2-2 Human Shaman that can tap to add one mana of any color. For a tri-color deck, mana fixing is very important. Also, later in the game, we can pay 7, tap, and sacrifice Draconic Disciple to create a 5-5 red dragon creature token with flying. Fangren Firstborn for 1 and 3 green. We get a 4-2 beast. Whenever it attacks, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each attacking creature. Though we are not working with a plus 1 plus 1 counter focused deck, the fact that attacking, which we're going to be doing anyway, is going to make our creatures get an additional plus one plus one is nothing to scoff at. For three mana, you can cast Thalamorid, a one three flying beast that cannot be blocked by blue creatures. You can also pay one blue and target creature is blue until end of turn. For seven, you can cast a seven seven trampler, Garrick's Horde. Play with the top card of your library revealed. Also, you may cast the top card of your library if it is a creature card. Garrick's Pack Leader for 5, you get a 4-4 Beast. Whenever another creature with power 3 or greater enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. And Grave Sifter for 6, you get a 5-7 Elemental Beast. Whenever Grave Sifter enters the battlefield, each player chooses a creature type and returns any number of cards of that type from his or her graveyard to his or her hand. For some artifact and enchantment removal, we have Indric Stomp Howler for 5, you get a 4-4 Beast. Whenever it enters the battlefield, destroy target artifact or enchantment. For 7 mana, you get a 9-9 Beast with Shroud. This is going to be an awesome card in this deck for the fact that it cannot be countered thanks to our commander. And it will also gain Trample off of our commander's ability as well. So a 9-9 creature that your opponents cannot interact with except for a board wipe is nothing short of awesome. Krakillin for X and 2 green. It comes in with X-1-1 counters. You can also regenerate it for one and a green. And the backbone of our beasts, Crows and Warchief. For two and a green, you get a 2-2 beast. Beast spells you play cost one less. And you can regenerate target beast for one and a green. For some of our artifact hate, we have Manglehorn. For three mana, we can cast a 2-2 beast. Whenever it enters the battlefield, we may destroy target artifact. Also, artifacts your opponent's control enter the battlefield tapped. Mistform Warchief for 3, we get a 1-3 Illusion. It can tap and become the creature type of our choice until end of turn, and thus creatures of that type cost 1 less to cast. Nessian Game Warden for 5, we get a 4-5 Beast. Whenever it enters the battlefield, look at the top X cards of your library where X is the number to force you control. You may reveal a creature card from among them and put it into your hand. So, if we have a lot of forests, we play this card, it'll let us dig for a creature. Null Tread Gargantuan for 3, we get a 5-6 Beast. However, whenever we play it, we have to put a creature card we control on top of its owner's library. Now, we're going to try and use this to our advantage by playing plenty of creatures that have good enter the battlefield abilities. So, when we play this, we'll bounce a creature that we want to use the ability again anyway. And then we'll be able to reuse that and we'll have a 5-6 on the board for 3 mana. Paleo Loth. For 6, you get a 5-5 Beast. Whenever another creature with power 5 or greater comes into play under your control, you may return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. For a little bit of protection on a creature, we have Plax Manta. For 1 and a blue, you get a 2-2 Beast with Flash. Whenever it enters the battlefield, creatures you control gain Shroud until end of turn. Sacrifice it unless green was spent to cast it. So a good way to flash out a creature, say they're trying to target remove one of our big creatures or our commander, Throw this guy out there, gives them a shroud so they are safe. Ridge Scale Tusker for 5, you get a 5-5 five, five beast. Whenever it enters the battlefield, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each other creature you control. Riptide Mangler for 1 and a blue, you get a 0-3 beast. For 1 and a blue, you can change Riptide Mangler's power to target creature's power. Also, it doesn't change back at the end of the turn, so this ability is permanent. So say you have a massive creature on your board, or... In the off chance, like if an opponent is playing some Eldrazi, they have some very massive creatures, just take their power, and then it becomes that much power with 3 toughness. Roaring Primadox. For 4, you get a 4-4 four, four beast. 
At the beginning of your upkeep, return a creature you control to its owner's hand. This is going to be one of the key players in this deck that is going to help us balance our creatures that have good enter the battlefield abilities so we can cast them again. However, if we do, have, do not have any of those key creatures on the battlefield, we may want to hold off casting this so as to not get rid of some of our creatures that may not be able to have haste when they come in. Shaman of the Great Hunt is going to allow us to draw some. He has haste whenever a creature deals combat damage to a player, put a plus one plus one counter on it, and ferocious for two and either a blue or a green. Draw a card for each creature you control with power four or greater. Slippery Bogle for a green or a blue, you get a one one beast with hexproof. Tempest Collar for two and two blue, a personal favorite of mine. This 2-3 Merfolk Wizard will enter the battlefield and tap all creatures target opponent controls. A very overlooked ability, but quite powerful. Leaving an opponent completely open for an attack is not something to overlook. Trigon Predator. For one, a green and a blue, you get a 2 thief Flying Beast. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you may destroy target artifact or enchantment that player controls. And Viridian Zealot. For two green, you get a 2-1 Elf Warrior who you can pay one and a green sack and destroy target artifact or enchantment. As a result of playing some very high CMC creatures and spells, we are absolutely going to want to ramp. Far Wanderings, for three mana, you search your library for a basic land card, put it into play tapped, and then shuffle your library. It also has threshold. If we have seven or more cards in our graveyard, we will search our library for three basic land cards, put them into play, and shuffle our library. Farseek, search your library for a plains, island, swamp, or mountain card, put it into play tapped, and then shuffle. Fertile Ground, a land enchantment. Whenever enchanted land is tapped for mana, its controller adds one mana of any color to his or her mana pool, so it will help us ramp and mana fix as well. Gift of Paradise, enchant land. When Gift of Paradise enters the battlefield, gain three life. Whenever enchanted land is tapped for mana, you can add two mana of any one color to your mana pool. And Rampant Growth, the OG Mana Ramper. For one and a green, search your library for a basic land card, put that card into play tapped, and then shuffle your library. Since a large portion of our game plan is based around our creatures, we definitely want to have spells that intend on protecting them. Blossoming Defense for a green. Target creature you control gets plus two plus two and gains hexproof until end of turn. Dive Down for one blue. Target creature you control gets plus zero plus three and gains hexproof until end of turn. Glint. Target creature you control gets plus zero, plus three, and gains hexproof. Slightly more than dive down, but with the same effect. And Lazatep Plating. For one and a blue, you can amass one, and you and permanence you control gain hexproof until end of turn. Being in blue, we couldn't help but play a few counter spells. Disappearing Act. For one and two blue, as an additional cost to cast Disappearing Act, return a permanent you control to its owner's hand and counter target spell. There are going to be a few counter spells in here that are going to require us to return permanents or creatures to our hand. This is going to be playing into the enter the battlefield abilities we are going to be running in this deck, so we really do not mind this. Dispersal Shield for one and a blue. Counter target spell if its converted mana cost is less than or equal to the highest converted mana cost among permanents you control. Dream Fracture for one and two blue. Counter target spell. Its controller draws a card and also draw a card. Familiar's Ruse for two blue. As an additional cost to play Familiar's Ruse, return a creature you control to its owner's hand and counter target spell. And Hinder for one and two blue. Counter target spell. If it's countered this way, put that card on the top or bottom of its owner's library instead of that player's graveyard. Notice all of our counter spells all say counter target spell, not counter target creature spell or anything specific. We do like the general counters as we can use them in any situation. In this deck, we are running some fairly unconventional wipes as they do not destroy all creatures, but rather send them back to their owner's hands. Aetherize, for three and a blue, return all attacking creatures to their owner's hands. Creeping Corrosion, if artifacts are a problem, we'll just destroy all of them. Crush of Tentacles, return all non-lane permanents to their owner's hand. Also, if the surge cost was paid, put an 8-8 eight, eight blue octopus creature token onto the battlefield. Devastation Tide, return all non-lane permanents to their owner's hands. Displacement Wave for X and 2 blue. Return all non-lane permanents with converted mana cost X or less to their owner's hands. And Wash Out for 3 and a blue. Return all permanents of the color of your choice to their owner's hands. And although they are the least fun to talk about, but they are no less important, are our lands. We're going to be running a total of 37 lands in this deck. 27 basics that include 9 forests, 9 islands, and 9 mountains. 
and 10 non-basics. We have Evolving Wilds and Terramorphic Expanse. Both are going to be helping us fetch basic lands of our choice. So Mana Fixing, Ash Barrens has basic land cycling. Blighted Woodlands can tap, sacrifice, and get two basic lands of our choice. Command Tower is going to add a color of our commander's color identity. Frontier Bivouac adds a red, a green, or a blue. Grand Colosseum can tap and add one mana of any color for just a modest one damage. Contested Cliffs will allow our beasts to fight creatures that our opponents control. Crumbling Vestige will enter, add one mana of any color, and we can also tap it for colorless mana later in the game. And Unstable Frontier, a land we control, becomes the basic land type of our choice, so more mana fixing with this one as well. And just like that, we have reached the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and leave us a comment down below. Let us know what commanders you would like to see us make deck techs for in the future. We really appreciate the support.